بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمة الحمد لله we are able to have our studies of secrets of prayer according to Jamal Saadat and today is the first Friday of the month of Rajab so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and for giving us tawfiq to inshallah get closer to him in this blessed month of Rajab as you remember we were talking about recitation of Surah Al-Hamd after Takbiratul Ihram and Dua of Iftita and Istaada etc. We started with Surah Al-Hamd and we reached Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim this is page 280 of volume 3 of Jami al-Sa'adat by the late Mullah Muhammad Mahdi and Naraqi so when we reach Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim we should know that this is our greatest haja, our greatest need the greatest need that we need to ask Allah for is guidance he says فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ طَلَبٌ لَأَهَمَّ حَاجَاتِكَ if we have guidance then we can get other things but if we don't have guidance other things would not come and those things that we have would not be sufficient Wahiya, he himself explains what is this main haja that you have al hidayatu ila nahj al haq guidance towards the right path الذي يسوقك إلى جوار الله which leads you to a position of closeness to God جوار الله you become like a neighbor you become very close you know in Arabic we have this title of جار الله جار الله means neighbor of God of course this is used for some people who have spent some time certain time in Mecca but that is physical neighborhood but if you are near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart you are also Jarullah so guidance is to be helped to move towards this position it would lead you to pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this sirat mustaqim gives us also ability to be in company of those that Allah has blessed upon them he says sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim this sirat mustaqim is the path of the people that Allah has bestowed his blessings and bounties upon them which ni'mah in particular he says ni'mat al-hidayah those that already have been given guidance and elsewhere the Quran says that these are prophets these are witnesses these are uh, the righteous people these are the most truthful people man yuta'illaha wa rasul fa'ulaika ma'al ladina an'ama allahu alayhim min al-nabiyyina wa al-shuhada'i wa al-siddiqina wa al-salihin 
or maybe Mina Nabin was Siddiqin was Shahada was Salim. Just I I just doubt it. So these four groups of people are mentioned there. That these are an'amta alayhim in Surah Hamd. Here says an'amallahu alayhim. Allah has given ni'ma to them, blessed them, bestowed His blessing upon them. And then He says wa hasuna ula'ika rafiqa. And these are very good companions. So they are already on this right path. And we want to join them and be with them and follow them. They are our guides. They are very familiar with this path. They are ahead of us, so they can help us. But in order to understand this path, there is another thing also that can help us. One is to know who are on the path. The other thing that helps you so that you don't go to wrong direction, we are introduced who are not on the right path. So if you meet them, you know that that is the right direction. So you turn. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. This مغضوب عليهم, this group of مغضوب عليهم, what the group of الضالين are not on this path. So we should not be with them. We should distance ourselves from them so that. We go toward the right direction. So Allah has made it very easy for us. Look at Anbiya, wa Shuhada, wa Siddiqin, wa Salihin. Try to be with them. And look at Maghduba alayhim and Zalin and try to be far from them. Maghduba alayhim are those that Allah is angry with them. They acted against his will, means voluntarily, by their own decision, deliberately, they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have gone to the wrong direction, not because they mistakenly thought this is the right direction. No. They didn't bother or sometimes they are so stubborn that actually they want to do opposite. Whatever prophets say, they do the opposite. So, مَغْضُوبَ alayhim with knowledge, with understanding, with their own decision, have gone to the right direction. But, وَلَضَّالِينَ are those who are misguided, but not necessarily because they want it. They deliberately, you know, disobeyed. Therefore, these are ضَالَ These are misguided, but not necessarily Allah is angry with them. They missed the point. They missed the right direction. دون الذين غضب الله عليهم من الكفار والزائفين. Those who are kafir, of course, kufr jihud. Those who are against, although they were sure, they were certain, not that they didn't know. والزائفين. Those who are misguided. And then he mentions some. Uh, groups of you know religious people that in some hadith are mentioned but we should know that they are not limiting the meaning of ayah and also they are not necessarily uh, the case for this ayah these are examples and these refer to certain uh, groups of those people that they were either maghduba alayhim or valin but there are many of them who are very good. And also there might be many Muslims who are maghduba alayhim or who are dhalin. There are Muslims uh, that they are more harmful than even non-believers, let alone serious believers from other traditions. So. If in the in some hadith some examples are mentioned, we have to understand those are examples. Secondly, that example is only true as long as th that's the case, as long as the people that we are using as example are acting that way. Okay. What is the general situation in Surah Al-Hamd? 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین عبد و لوالین What is the general situation? What is the general understanding that I should have? The late Mullah Mahdi Atalaghi says وَإِذَا تَلَوْتَ الْفَاتِحَةَ كَذَلِكَ if you recite Fatiha in the way that we said, what to think when we say Bismillah rahman rahim what to think when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, up to end. He says, if you recite Fatiha in this way, فَيُشْبَهُ أَن تَكُونَ مِمَّنْ قَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ بِمَا أَخْبَرَ عَنْهُ النَّبِي It's likely, and you are like the people, that Rasulullah has mentioned in a hadith, that Allah says this about them. So there's a hadith Qudsi that Rasulullah has mentioned. In that hadith Qudsi, Allah talks about these people. He doesn't mention except part of it. But uh, for example, this is one version at least in some books. Maybe uh, there are also other versions that one can look for. But what... Uh, I found uh, uh, today is from Sahih Muslim and it says that Qalallahu Azza wa Jal qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain I have divided salat between me and my servant into two parts half of it for him half of it for me وَلَعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ And for my servant is whatever he asks for. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ When the servant says, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَمَدَنِي عَبْدِي My servant has praised me. فَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ When he says, الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, Athna alayya abdi. He has done thana of me. He has praised me with mentioning some of blessings and bounties. فَإِذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ قَالَ مَجَّدَنِي عَبْدِي My servant has glorified me and has revered me. So, so far it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Hamadani Abdi, Athna Alayya Abdi, Majadani Abdi. But Ida Gila Iya Kana Abudu Iya Kana Stain. We only worship you and we only ask you for help. Allah says, Hada Baini Wabayina Abdi. This is common. This is for me and this is for him. Wala Abdi Ma Sa'al. And for him, what he wants. فَإِذَا قَالَ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرَ الْمَغْضُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Allah says, هَذَا لَعَبْدِي So the first part was for Allah. The last part is for servant. In between, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It's for Allah and the servant. So this is a beautiful hadith about how Surah Al-Hamd is divided into two parts. Partly praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and referring to Him. Partly asking for uh, things that you need, especially your guidance. And then when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim You go to Ruku after Hamd and Surah you go to Ruku then you stand up and you say Sami'allahu liman hamida Allah is listening and hearing those who praise him He says this Hamida is the first Alhamdulillah that you say So you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen you finish, then you go to Ruku and you stand up. You say, Sami'allahu liman hamida. Allah has heard the one who has praised him. Where? Alhamdulillah. This is what he says. 
Of course, uh, I personally think that maybe there is another possibility, and that is in Ruku. You say Subhan Rabbi Al Azim wa Bihamdi. Then you stand up and say Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. As soon as you said Hamd, he heard it. At the same time, it doesn't need to be that far, you know, beginning of Surah Al Hamd, and then we have, you know, another Surah, then we go to Ruku and say Subhan Rabbi Al Azim wa and then saying Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. No, maybe it's referring to. Hamd in Subhan Rabbi Al Azim Hamd. Maybe. Although it is not wajib to say Subhan Rabbi Al Azim Hamd. For example, many say you can say Subhanallah, 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 or something which takes that long. But it's very common to say Subhan Rabbi Al Azim Hamd. Then he says, if in your Salat you don't have anything except enjoying Zikrullah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering his greatness, that would be enough Ghani'ima for you, enough achievement. Ghani'ima means war booty, but it is used in general sense. It's not Ghani'imatul Harb only, it's not war booty only. Anything that you make as a prophet. So, if you enjoy Zikrullah, that's great for you, and that's a great ghanima, great benefit, a profit for you, let alone the reward that you are going to get. Then he says, Yanbagi and Tafham. It is expected, it's better if you understand what you say, and those things that you mention in Surah Al. Ham, for example, in the surah after that, you should try to implement, to hacker, make it happen, make it real. For example, if there is amr, nay, commands or prohibitions or promise or threat, or they're preaching, there are some inf information, some things that are about, for example, advices of the prophet, etc. So you should implement them, you should make them real means as much as you are concerned, you should do them, bring them, implement them, establish them. For example, for Amrunah, you should have Azm, determination, for command and provision. For Va'd, if there is a promise, you should have Raja, hope. If there is Va'id, it's a threat, and Khawf, you should have fear. If there is Maw'idha, preaching, you should do Atta'ad, means to take lesson. If there are Akhbarul Anbiya, things, news about prophets, so you should get Ibrah, you should get lesson from that. If there is Minna mentioned, some Allah's uh, way of obliging us are mentioned, then we should be grateful to Allah. So these things, according to the level of understanding, would be put together. And the more knowledge you have, the more sincerity and purity of the heart you have, the better you understand. And then he says, As-salatu miftahul qulub. Salat is the key for the hearts. Therefore, when you are in salat, the heart is open and you have better chance of understanding asrar al-kalimat. The secrets of these words that we say. And this is the proper way of recitation that you recite it with understanding and hopefully opening your heart so that you understand better. Then he says people with respect to recitation are three groups. Some people يَتَحَرَّكُ لِسَانُهُ وَقَلْبُهُ غَافِلُ their tongues move, but their heart is heedless. Maybe even they recite very beautifully, but their heart is not touched. This is one group. Their tongue moves, but their heart is following the tongue. 
So if they say something, the heart is there and following and meaning afterwards. But there is, these are good people and these are Ashabul Yamin, these are people of the right side. But the best is this one. يَسْبِقُ قَلْبُهُ إِلَى الْمَعَانِ أَوَّلًا ثُمَّ يَخْدِمُ اللِّسَانُ قَلْبَهُ وَيُتَرْجُ First, heart moves fast towards meanings. In my mind it comes that I need guidance from God. So I say, اِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِمُ This is the way uh, I have... I mentioned in some lectures on Salat, like the series on uh, Secrets of Prayer and Fasting that we had, which is published also in the Spiritual Quest. I said that it's better if we think about the meaning first and then we mean it and say it. Not that when we say it, then we think what we said or, you know, when we uh, say it, it takes some time to understand what we said. No. Mean it and then say it. And he says, there is a difference. It's a very beautiful point here. He says, there is a difference. Even for the people whose heart is present, but sometimes heart is understanding and qalb is the main thing, heart. Lesan is tarjuman, is interpreter of what is in the heart. So tongue is following heart by being tarjuman, interpreter for heart. But sometimes heart follows tongue, so tongue becomes the teacher of the heart. It shouldn't be like that. Tongue doesn't have understanding. Heart should be commander. فرق بين أن يكون اللسان ترجمان القلب أو يكون معلم القلب. So differences between these two. That the tongue is interpreter for the heart. So whatever is the heart, it's expressed, just expressed by the tongue. Or the tongue is the main thing and the heart is following. So the tongue is teaching the heart. المقربون as Habul Yamin, we said they come with the you know the words they come. So Qalb Yatbaul Ma'ana. This is As Habul Yamin. But what about Mukarrabun? He says Al Mukarrabun Al Sinatuhum Tarjumanun Tatbaul Qalb. Mukarrabun are those that their tongue is interpreting what is in the heart. They are not saying something you know, from a different world or different reality. What is in their heart, they say it. Then what about the tone and the melody and the speed of recitation? Hay'ah, the form and format and structure of recitation. He says, you should do tartil. Tartil, hefz al wakuf wa ada al huruf. To say these words, you know, not too fast, not too slow, with a balanced pace. Yan bagi an tura yal hay atafil qira. You must consider hay at the cast, the form. In recitation, So do tarti. Tarti means slowly. But if it is with tasrid, means it says one by one, very slowly. Alhamdulillah. Rab. Al alamin. Al rahman. You say too slow. The connection is missed. Or too fast. I don't want to say too fast actually. So neither too slow nor too fast. This is tartil. And this helps with understanding and reflection. Fa'inna dhalika aysar 
if you do it with this balanced pace, it's easier for reflection, for contemplation. And then the way you read a verse about rahma or about punishment, about promise or about threat, these are, should be different. Unfortunately, sometimes people don't pay, even I have seen great reciters or great people who have beautiful recitation and they know Tajweed, uh, they read as if the content is not um, important. They have the same melody. They read everything in the same melody. But I think the way we recite should be someone who is talking to God. Although we are doing Qiraa of Quran, but it should be as if we are talking to God, but using his own words. Therefore, when I am talking to Allah, I should say, Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'een. I am addressing God, I am talking to him. Not that I am just reading a sentence from the Quran that could be Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'een, or could be something about another person, a third party, etc. Then he says, some people, they had so much of respect and haya, positive shame, that for example, when they were reciting an ayah which involved something not very respectful, a criticism of you know, what some people thought about God or was attributed to God, they were you know, very embarrassed, they were shy. For example, مَتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ وَلَدٍ وَمَا كَانَ مَعَهُ مِنْ إِلَاهٍ this ayah refutes the idea of those people who thought God had adopted children or there are other gods. So some people when they were reading this, they were bringing their voice low. They were very embarrassed of mentioning everything. Like for example, you know, if you are reporting to someone that you know I met someone and said to say to you these words and those words are not very respectful so as Amana you have to say the same thing for example maybe if there is a necessity because sometimes uh, if it is our choice we shouldn't say bad things that people have said but sometimes this person says you know you must say this to him that for example, I am not happy with you. I am not. I am angry with you. You know, you did this. You ha he asks you, please, you know, take this amana. To but when you are reporting, you show that you are sad for saying this thing. I am sorry that I am saying this. You know, it's like this. So some people, when they were saying, "Mattaqadallahu min walad, wa ma kana ma'hu min ilah," verse ninety-two of Surah Al Noon, they were lowering their voice and they were embarrassed then he mentions a very important hadith that in the discussion about quranic sciences and understanding the quran we have mentioned this hadith that for someone uh, who is a companion of the quran would be said iqra warqa or in some hadith iqra Wasa'at, read and rise. How much you can read the Quran, you would be able to rise. Adadu daraj al jannah, adadu ayy al Quran. The hadith says the number of the ranks of heaven is equal to the number of the verses of the Quran. So the more, but it's not a matter of memorization. Like, you know, we have half the Quran and half the Quran memorizes after Quran. It's good to memorize the Quran, but this is not enough. Maybe someone is memorizer of the Quran. Maybe even in with sab qiraat, with seven recitation, but has not implemented even one ayah of the Quran. So it's not just memorizing by mind. It's a matter of how much you have absorbed the light of the Quran, how much you have acted upon the Quran. If you have acted 100%, then you would be there, uh, able to read the whole Quran. 
and go to the highest position. If not, lower. Then we have a discussion about Roku. What should be our understanding when we bow or bend before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think we leave this inshallah for the next session because there is a long discussion about Roku and then Sujood. After Roku, there will be Sujood. I stop here and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to say our Salat properly with understanding, with presence of heart, with having something positive to report to Him. When we say, it's a kind of report and we should have something positive to report. In some lectures I have explained that if the supposed employer says to the employee that every day at 12 o'clock come and tell me you have checked the mails, you have paid the bills, you have answered the phone calls, you have done this and that. He says every day at 12 come and give me a report. So this person forgets to do these things or comes late to the office but at 12 says oh I have appointment to go and give report then he says I have done this I have done this I have done this I have done this but he said you didn't do this he said yes but you told me to report to you every day that you have done this <laughs> this is missing the point he didn't say you know come and report me in a false way he meant that you do these things and come and report me report to me when we say at least we should be able to say that, you know, I tried this, I worked on this, I was conscious of this. Not that I forgot this and even now that I am saying, I am not aware of what I am saying. I am just like a parrot giving reports. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our salat very heartfelt inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah to sisters from USA and Lebanon and Bangladesh and other brothers and sisters on Zoom and Facebook. May Allah bless all of you. Do we have questions? Yes. So in terms of questions, uh, if anybody has the right questions, you can ask. The question that uh, I, would, I would like to ask right now is that uh, if, if somebody is a beginner yes. and they're trying to plan uh, how they improve their salah so one of the things that was mentioned is the salah itself all the all the directions within the actual wajib prayers the other thing that was mentioned is the nawafil that come with the salah yes. as a measure to help uh, with salah and here uh, today there was a discussion about how uh, salah is a has, has the ability to open the secrets of the words of Salah and particularly now the verses of the Quran the words in the Quran itself so there's now three things there's the wajib prayer there's uh, maybe qada prayer there's nawafil in order to make sure that um, you know the Salah quality is better but there, we already asked the question about how to manage qada and nawafil but now here what percentage of time how do you recommend that somebody tries to prioritize just reading Quran in Salah, like in Salat al-Layl, or uh, setting aside some time to read Quran. How, how, how do you see a beginner managing all of these things? Do they just forget about trying to open, read the Quran, like how it has been described, you know, that they stand and they read the Quran at night? This is for advanced people, uh, and just focus on other things, or should they... What can be an action plan for somebody who, who's a beginner? Beginner in what? To try to benefit, to try to benefit from the aspect of reciting Quran and mm. Salah, not just mm. with the Fatiha and Surah uh, Al-Qas or something yeah. like this. So the main thing is that you should try to mean what you say. Recitation is very important. 
but try to mean what you recite which means you understand and you mean it if I say something that I don't understand or I understand but I don't remember now I don't mean it then it's not that much powerful I'm not saying it's useless no it's useful very useful even if someone doesn't understand what is Surah Al-Hamd and keeps reciting Surah Al-Hamd it's useful if someone doesn't read the Quran just looks at the Quran it's very useful but someone who can understand and reflect is much better much better so try to read especially in your Salat those Rizks uh, that you understand learning Quran is not that much difficult and for the second surah try to recite those surahs that you can understand or at least have translation also to understand what you have said in Arabic I hope I understood the question yes thank you that was helpful we have a, a question here uh, that is the following when we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen what should we be thinking this is what we said last week Alhamdulillah so we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is designer and provider and maintainer of everything which is Jamil everything which is beautiful therefore we say all the praises due to him and this is the way he does his lordship his rububiyya for alameen for the inhabitants of the world who are intelligent is in this way alhamdulillah rabbil ar rahman ar rahim again as we explained last week you have to um, remember his rahmaniyya which is inclusive his rahimiyya which is additional to his rahmaniyya for the believers so in the series on Rahmah we have explained these things in the series secrets of prayer and fasting we have explained this and also to some extent the last week we uh, followed the book order and we talked about this there are some questions on Facebook one of them is in Farsi if you if you're able to see it yeah the question in Farsi uh, is about question. presence of heart what can I do for presence of heart we had some discussion before and uh, inshallah also in future uh, I hope we can go back to the first volume of the book where he has some uh, deep discussion about how to avoid waswasa the thoughts which come to our mind and we don't want them but basically as a summary of what we said before and alhamdulillah the previous lectures are available please you know whenever you get chance also start from the beginning one aspect of preparation is the timing the place we talked about what type of musalla you should have what type of attention you should have for time of salat from the time you make wuzu then you make azan iqama all our preparations should not be done like a robot it should be done with understanding and then by the time you want to say takbir you are already into a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your heart is present the atmosphere is ready no distraction nothing internal like too much hungry being too much hungry too much thirsty or you know things like this uh, nothing outside distract or no noise you know no for example painting where you are praying and also we said try to be to a corner or somewhere that no one is passing by if you are saying your salat alone so these are all the preparations that you have and then when you stand for salat think about what you are saying this is very powerful think about what you want first in your mind 
bring the meaning of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. First bring the meaning and then say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. In this way, inshallah, you will have presence of heart. Our children salah, how can we teach them to concentrate? To tell them to learn the meanings of the surah could be hard for some. Mm -hmm. For children, if they're not yet balik, the main thing is respect. You know, I think we shouldn't expect them to necessarily have presence of heart, but as long as they are externally, you know, observing humility and they are behaving properly, they have you know respect. I think for uh, children this is enough and inshallah little by little when they become baliq and they learn the meaning they can improve the quality there was a question about volume on uh, facebook i don't know whether volume over there is not good or because uh, i checked on my side uh, Shekna, your, your volume is good but i'm using uh, i'm using earphones yes maybe the person uh, adjust on their side. Yeah, for the recording that we will put later on YouTube, I have microphone, so inshallah that's volume would be good. But Facebook, this is the first time I'm hearing volume is not good. So if other people also have problem, please put on Facebook so that we find a solution for that, inshallah. Yes, and other questions uh, on Facebook is the following. Is there a part in Salah that can be read in a person's mother tongue or non-Arabic speakers? Not wajibat. But uh, your marja, you can check. Some some marajas say that onut, you know, some duas, you know, can be in your mother tongue. But not, for example, ruku, not sujood, not hamd, not tashahud, not salam. But for example, the dua in onut. Uh, but please check your marja rasala. If they don't have hijab, then the prayer is not sahih, it's not valid. Not only it is not accepted, it's not valid. But it's depending on the intention. Uh, if this person is doing this out of you know love and respect for Allah but is lazy if it's a hijab etc although it is not valid but still it's better than not you know not doing nothing but if they do it out of a stubbornness so you know I don't want to have hijab you know uh, I want to be without hijab and you know I don't want to listen to anyone I don't you know mind you know what all the maraj all the fuqaha have said so it, if this is the attitude, it, this is not helpful and maybe even it can be, you know, making the situation bad or worse. Or sometimes, you know, if they want to encourage other girls also to do the same. But if someone says, you know, I know hijab is important and necessary, but for example, I am lazy or I am not very much determined or, you know, I feel shy, you know, in front of non-Muslim for example to do this so I'm not saying it becomes valid because no faqih said hijab without hijab is valid but if Allah knows that this person at least is doing something you know for his sake even if it is not uh, adequate there might be some benefits better than not doing at all but my request is that at least for your salat you know if you don't observe hijab outside salat at least for salat you know if you go to any religious community christians you know jews zoroastrians when they go to their places of worship they cover uh, their head even if they don't have concept of hijab that much uh, left in their tradition at least in the places of worship in their ibadah they do this and 
everyone expects us, even non-Muslims expect us, you know, that when we are in Salat, uh, to be different. Uh, men should have, you know, a respectful dress. Women should have, you know, something to cover themselves. Even non-Muslims expect this. So may Allah, inshallah, help whoever has difficulty in observing hijab with, inshallah, finding better the whole philosophy of hijab, which is a very amazing concept. And this is a way that Allah has honored in a special way women. Allah for men has said that they must observe modesty. But women are so important that Allah has also designed somehow for them a dress. It's a dress of honor that Allah has given them. And therefore, even if you are alone and no one is there and you are just with Allah, you are praying, this dress of honor should be on you, inshallah. Allah I feel I was very spiritual before with nawafil and tahajjud, but since being married and having children and always looking at home duties and in-laws, I only have time for wajibat and then I'm so tired to wait for tahajjud. How can I recover my spirituality? Uh, first of all, the main thing is that you do your duties. If you are fulfilling your duties, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter, as a husband, as a brother, as a son. This is important. And then do with the rest of the things that you have as much as you can. Maybe now you have a young child is, you know, needs attention. You cannot, you know, spend, you know, lots of time. But if you really do your best, you know, this is the most important thing. Do your best. For someone, best means doing one hour. For someone, best maybe is five minutes. But do your best. Maybe when you are only able to do five minutes of tahajjud, for example, if really, because it's very difficult that someone cannot do more. But if only five minutes, do this five minutes. And you would see how much you will get with this five minutes if it's only time you have. Thank you very much. And one last question that we have here. Is it permissible to pray behind someone if they do mistakes uh, in their tajweed, in their recitation of Quran? So to commit small mistakes in there? If these mistakes are changing meaning, mistakes in recitation that change meaning then we cannot say our prayer behind them but if it is not reciting quran with you know perfect tajweed that's okay again please check rasala of your marja all the maraja here they have a masala about this issue uh, for example some maraja say that if someone is not able to recite properly, they may allow. For example, someone has an issue with his tongue that cannot say at all uh, what, for example. Then some may allow that you can follow. But some may say, no, you cannot follow. Uh, but if someone can learn and uh, still uh, makes mistakes which can change the meaning, I don't think any marja would allow. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of you and in this month of Rajab, inshallah, let us pray for each other and let us pray for Imam of our time and for all marhumin, all who have rights upon us, our parents and teachers. And may Allah inshallah give shafa to all people who are ill. May Allah inshallah make your heart full of love for himself and for his Awliya and for his creation, inshallah. Al-Tamasada. Al-Tamasada. Al-Tamasada.